Hi, welcome to today's video. My name is Paul. So this week, well, this week was all about drawing. So I had a chance to do some landscape drawing and also some, I'm going to call them still life drawings. Technically, they're not really still life drawings. Uh, as I understand it, to be a still life a drawing or a painting has to meet well, at least two criteria. The first one is, well, the subject matter has to be an inanimate object. So a bunch of flowers, a pile of books, um, an old pair of walking boots. One of my favorite artists, Vincent van Gogh, did quite a few still lifes. For example, he's famous for the sunflower paintings, but he also did still lifes, for example, an old, his old pair of walking boots. Anyway, those are all inanimate subjects. So they meet the first criterion. The second one then is you have to actually paint or draw the subject from life. I guess, hence the name still life. So the drawings that I did, and we'll see them in a minute or two in the video, they meet the first criterion, but not the second one, because as usual, I didn't draw from life. I drew from imagination. I sometimes wonder when I say that, am I putting myself down? Is there something inside my head saying, well, drawing from imagination isn't really as good as drawing from life? I don't know. Um, I think most of my brain is thinking drawing from imagination is a perfectly valid way of doing art. In fact, in some ways, I think it's better than drawing from life because as I've said before, to me, the role of an artist is not to be a camera or a photocopier. In, order, in other words, the role of the artist is not to reproduce nature, but to interpret nature or to interpret your, to try and portray your feelings about what you can see in the real world. To me, that's what art is. But of course, different people, different ideas. In the description box below this video, I try to remember to put a list of the materials I'm using, but they're basically I don't know, the same sort of things. It's these Derwent blocks again, this tone brownish craft paper that I talked about a few weeks ago. And this week, you'll also see me using a little bit of soft pastel in some of the drawings as well. Sometimes people ask, um, how do I choose which medium to use for specific drawing or painting? And the answer is very often there's no complicated system for deciding on which medium to use. It's just simply whatever I feel like on that particular day. If I wake up and think I'd like to use some soft pastel today, then that's what I'll try and do. Um, art I think is the kind of thing that you can make it as complicated as you want. I don't want to, I want to keep it simple. I just want to have fun doing drawing and painting. So I'll use the materials that I want to use. And I'm not going to sit and wonder about it for a long time. Um, I'm just going to pick up whatever I want and, and start drawing and painting because that's what I want to do. I want to spend time creating drawings and paintings, not thinking about drawings and paintings. Anyway, I'm being sidetracked. Um, the thing that I kind of wanted to talk about this week was an article that I read recently. And the article, I can't remember the exact title, but it was something like, why are there so few famous women artists? Now, normally um, gender politics is something that I would run a million miles from, any sort of politics on this channel. Uh, I want to talk about art not about politics. Talking about politics, to me, it's sometimes it's like watching a puppy dog chasing its own tail. People just seem to run around in circles and nobody's really listening to the other person. At least this is sometimes what I feel like. But anyway, like I say, I usually try to avoid politics. But on this occasion, I thought I'm not going to censor myself. I'm going to say what I think. So that title, why are there so few famous women artists? 
I would say, first of all, that title is kind of making an assumption about becoming famous, that it's somehow linked to gender. First of all, I would say that why are there so few famous artists? Because I don't think becoming famous is the default position, the default outcome. It's not the normal situation. There are many people who become artists who will never become famous. Despite what Andy Warhol said about we all have our 15 minutes of fame, I don't think that's actually true. I think most of us will go through life without ever becoming famous. And even the word famous, what does it really mean? Um, you know, you could say, for example, Van Gogh, Vincent Van Gogh, Picasso, Rembrandt, these names are really famous. So even people who have little to no interest in art, chances are that most of them will have heard of at least one of those names. They may not know much about the person, but they may have heard of the name. That's one level of being famous. But there's an awful lot of, you might say, famous artists who are only really famous within a smaller um, circle of people. They're famous within a circle of people, people who are interested in art, maybe. So even the word famous, um, there's a bit of ambiguity there, I think. But anyway, as I say, I don't think that becoming famous is the default outcome. Uh, most artists, male, female, whatever, they never become famous. And in some cases, there are other factors at work, sometimes chance, luck, other people, all kinds of things. So I've already mentioned a couple of times Vincent van Gogh, or van Gogh, if you prefer. In Japan, they call him Goho. All three of these attempts at pronouncing his name, of course, are incorrect. I think that's why Vincent just signed his paintings, Vincent. He knew that those of us who are not Dutch and don't speak Dutch, uh, trying to pronounce his family name correctly is actually quite tricky. But anyway, um, Vincent van Gogh, we have to remember when he died, and of course he died quite young, he was not famous. In fact, you could say he died in obscurity. The little town, the village where he lived and worked for most of the last number of years of his life, I guess a lot of the people in that village knew about Vincent. They may have known him as the crazy art guy or something like that, but they knew that he existed. Some of them may have seen some of his paintings. Some of them may never have seen his paintings. And then, of course, Vincent sent a lot of his paintings up to Theo in Paris. So Theo, in the hope of drumming up some interest and maybe selling some of the paintings. So Theo was showing the paintings to some of his connections in the art world. And of course, Vincent would have been known to some extent amongst contemporary artists. Especially from his early days in Paris, um, where he was friendly with a number of artists. But when you add up all those people together, it's still a relatively small number of people. Um, and outside of that small circle, as I say, Vincent van Gogh was unknown. He wasn't at all famous, no matter how you define the word famous. It was a woman called Joanna. And Joanna was Vincent's sister-in-law. She was married to Vincent's brother, Theo. So Theo died not long after Vincent died. And as a result, Joanna inherited a vast number of Vincent's paintings. Apparently the house was coming down with the paintings. It was, they were under the bed, in the cupboards, behind the cupboards, everywhere. Joanna's brother wanted her to just get rid of the paintings, take them out into the yard and burn them or sell them for whatever to an art dealer or something, just get rid of them, sell the house and move back to our parents. But Joanna didn't want to do that. Um, I think she was quite an independent woman and she didn't want to, to do that. Instead, she chose to try to drum up support and try to drum up some interest in Vincent's artwork. She started showing his artwork to whoever would look at it, um, going out, trying to 
get some interest in what Vincent had done in his life. If Joanna had never done that, if she had listened to her brother and just burnt the paintings or sold them off to whoever, there's a good chance that we would never have heard of Vincent van Gogh. So he became famous thanks to Joanna. So I think the point is, you know, there's so much, there's so many factors in why a particular artist can become famous. And very often it's not about gender. It's about somebody you know, uh, maybe connections, maybe somebody working on your behalf, chance, luck, um, where and when you're born. Oh, there's so many different things that can affect whether or not you'll become famous. But as I said, default position is the normal outcome of becoming an artist is you'll never become famous. And I think that's true for all walks of life. Most human beings alive, how many of us are there now? I forget, seven billion, something like that. A tiny, tiny fraction of those will ever become famous. It's not a negative way of thinking, it's just reality, I think. Anyway, that's my, um, my thoughts on this issue. As I say, yes, there are, there probably is um, an argument or a case for why museums and things are full of paintings by male artists and not so many female artists. But becoming famous, to me, it's not something that's just down to gender. There's so many other factors. Anyway, I say those are my thoughts. If you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching and listening um, and hopefully see you in next week's video.